In the quaint and obscure town of Aelder, nestled between towering mountains and singing creeper vines, there lived an alchemist. Old Marlowe was not your ordinary potion master. He was irascible, humorous, with a shock of silver hair and a twinkling eye that had seen more potions brewed than there were stars in the night sky. One dreary afternoon, an enigmatic figure shrouded in an obsidian cloak materialized at Marlowe's crammed shop. A hoarse voice croaked out from under the hood. I need a potion, alchemist, one of particular strength and intention. The stranger's voice carried an edge of urgency that was as disquieting as his spectral presence. Aye, and which potion would that be? Marlowe inquired, scratching his stubbled chin, eyeing the hooded figure with wary interest. One that can make me the most powerful man in the kingdom, the figure responded, cold determination leaking into his words. Marlowe chuckled a dry, cracking sound that echoed around the shop. Power, is it? A dangerous thing to seek, more dangerous still to attain. His gaze never wavered from the stranger. Despite his profound reservations, Marlowe's curiosity was piqued. His life had been an endless parade of mundane requests for love potions, healing elixirs, and eternal beauty concoctions. This was something new. It reeked of danger, and yet, it was enticing. Over the next fortnight, Marlowe toiled away. The air in his shop was pregnant with magical aromas, sweet basil, acrid wolfsbane, the earthy tang of dragon's blood, each ingredient chosen meticulously, each chant muttered with precision. Meanwhile, the identity of the hooded man had become the subject of rampant town gossip. Speculation about his intentions ran wild, filling Elder with a buzz of fearful anticipation. Still, Marlowe remained tight-lipped, ever the professional, divulging nothing about the potion or its requester. Finally, the day came when the potion was ready. A swirling concoction of hues, shifting from red to blue to gold. It hummed with power, the vibration so tangible that Marlowe could almost taste the might it promised. The hooded man arrived at dusk, his silhouette framed by the dying embers of the sun. He extended a gloved hand his dark eyes gleaming with a hunger for the power he sought. Marlowe hesitated, holding the potion out of reach. Beware, Marlowe said gravely. Power can be as much a curse as it is a blessing. Ignoring Marlowe's warning, the man snatched the potion and downed it in a single gulp. A blinding light engulfed him, then receded as quickly as it had arrived. A gleam of triumph flashed across his face. But as the moments ticked by, something seemed wrong. He looked at his hands, expecting them to crackle with magical energy. He tried to summon power to feel the rush of invincibility. Nothing happened. What trickery is this? He roared, rounding on Marlow. You promised me power. Aye, I did, Marlow replied, a mischievous twinkle in his eyes, a ghost of a smirk playing on his lips. And power ye now have. Look closer, lad. Confusion spread across the hooded man's face. He looked down at his hands again. He could see crumbs? Marlowe let out a peal of laughter, doubling over, clutching his belly. Behold the power of baking, he gasped out between his hearty chuckles. With a gasp of realization, the man looked around. His gloved hands were dusted with flour. A fresh loaf of bread had materialized on the counter. Marlowe's shop was filled with the homely scent of fresh baked bread. The realization hit him like a bucket of icy water. The power he had sought had turned him into the kingdom's most powerful baker. The roars of laughter from the old alchemist filled the shop, amplifying his humiliation. Word spread like wildfire through Elder. The powerful stranger was no threat. He was now the most talented baker in the kingdom, much to the mirth of the townsfolk. His once menacing presence now elicited smiles and teasing salutations of baker. This tale of Marlowe and his wrong potion became a legend in Elder, told and retold with chuckles around the fireside. It served as a subtle reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the need for humility and perspective in our pursuits of power. After all, the most powerful man in the kingdom was now the one who baked the best bread. It wasn't the power he'd asked for, but in the end, it was the power he deserved.